Hello and welcome to episode number 12 of Prosperity by the Pint. I'm your host, Bryce Carter. I'm a self-proclaimed millennial money expert. I've earned the marks of the CFP, which is Certified Financial Planner, Chartered Financial Consultant, as well as a Certified Investment Management Analyst. This is the episode where we talk about money, investing, business, and life success all while having a cold beer. This episode, I'm talking about Social Security and how Social Security is going to screw over my generation. Uh, and I'm drinking a very interesting beer, which I haven't had a sip of yet. I wanted to wait until we were we were rolling to do it. But it's called, um, it's this is from Monday Night Brewing. It is a uh, called Slam Dunk Orange Creamsicle Milkshake Milkshake IPA, and this is out of Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, it's clear, which I did not expect from a milkshake creamsicle IPA, but we'll see how this goes. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what to think about that. That's all right. The aftertaste is coming through and you can, it does, it tastes like a freaking orange creamsicle. This is crazy. I, just, I gotta take another drink here. Orange creamsicle IPA. I'll let you know when I get to the bottom of the glass, what I think, but is social security a Ponzi scheme? So PBS, Wall Street uh, Journal, Forbes, uh, Washington Post, they have all have articles that are essentially posing this question is, is Social Security a Ponzi scheme? I've been wanting to do an episode on this topic since I launched the podcast. And in fact, <clears throat> I pulled it up uh, just as I was preparing for this episode. Five years ago, I wrote an article entitled, Is Social Security a Ponzi Scheme? And compliance told me, that article would never see the light of day. So here we are five years later, and I'm doing a podcast about it instead. Is Social Security a Ponzi scheme? So let me talk for a minute and just say that we are responsible for our own retirement, not the government, not our companies, us, you, yourself, and I are responsible for your retirement. Don't plan on Social Security, especially if you're a millennial like me. Just don't plan on it. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I, you know, I personally feel prediction wise that social security will look nothing like it does today. By the time we get to retirement, I think that it's very likely if you do a good job of saving, you won't be entitled to almost to anything that you put into that system. So what I want to talk about is how this, this, this damn system works and uh, whether it is a Ponzi scheme or not. So that's the question. I don't know that I'll be able to answer it definitively, but I can give you the facts and you know you can let me know what you think. So first, before we get into how Social Security works, how does a Ponzi scheme work? Well, so a Ponzi scheme takes dollars from early investors and pays it out as fake returns to future investors, right? So if you're a, you know, if you're the a first investor, they're they're taking your dollars and they're, and they're they're paying it out, um, and they they rely on new investors coming in and feeding that funnel. So let's go about this a different way. I'm an investor in a Ponzi scheme. I put in a thousand dollars. That thousand dollars isn't actually invested on my behalf. That thousand dollars goes out as fake returns to people that invested before me. In order for a Ponzi scheme to keep going on, they have got to attract new investors. If there's no new investors, there's no money to go out as fake returns. So Bernie Madoff had the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time. Uh, if we conclude that Social Security is not, in fact, a Ponzi scheme, which I, I, I'm going to say I don't actually really think it is a Ponzi scheme, but I think the, 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 there's some fundamental issues with how it's structured. But Bernie Madoff had like a $60 billion Ponzi scheme. And what he did was he essentially took the dollars from investors, put it into a Chase Manhattan bank account, and he would generated fake statements that showed that their money was earning a rate of return. And when they went to cash out a rate of return, he paid for those dollars using new investor dollars. So that's how a Ponzi scheme works. So your dollars are not actually invested on your behalf. So Let's take a look at Social Security now. So Social Security was created in 1935. It was it was enacted by President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the man that won us World War II, and depending on who you ask, our only four-term president. And uh, Social Security was created because during 
the Great Depression, there was a staggeringly high amount of elderly people that were living in poverty that were essentially starving and, and had nothing. So I want to say, despite any issues that, that I have with the Social Security system, it was definitely needed at that time, and it is, it is instrumental in many people's uh, lives today. But let's talk about some of the problems. Beer break. I got to get a handle on this cream sickle IPA. I don't know what I think of it yet. I mean, it's. I. I, I can't say that I dislike it, um, but I don't know that I could drink any more than one of these. It's just weird. It's just a weird beer. But I, I mean, it's not bad. All right. So when Social Security was launched in 1935, it started with a 1% tax, a 1%, and it was only played by you as the worker. Now, there's a rumor I heard in a presentation one time. Uh, I haven't been able to substantiate it, so caveat, that Franklin Roosevelt's mother was so pissed off about this social program that he had to pay her Social Security tax for her. Back then, they didn't automatically take stuff out of your checking account or out of your uh, paycheck. You had to write checks for taxes. It was So the rumor has it that she he had to pay her tax. And at the time, Franklin Roosevelt said it would never be higher than the 1%. 20 separate occasions, Social Security tax has been risen. So 20 separate occasions. Now... It is 6.2% for employees, 6.2% for employers, and a whopping 12.4% tax if you're self-employed. That's Social Security tax. That doesn't even include Medicare tax on that. But So 12.4% if you're self-employed. That sucks. Uh, for future information on or additional information on taxes, uh, visit Episode 9, Taxes Suck. So 12.4% tax. By the way, when you collect Social Security, depending on how well you've saved, it, it might be taxable again, right? And and we don't get to deduct Social Security from our income returns, our tax returns. So let's go through how this works. So Social Security is what's known as a flow-through system. So my dollar goes in today. And, uh, you know, my, my 6.2% being an employee and 6.2% as a self-employed, so my dollars are going in the Social Security system. They are not, in fact, invested for my benefit. They actually flow directly out in, to previous Social Security investors. Might sound slightly familiar. There's some key differences here. So uh, between this and that other thing we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, which I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say it right now, Ponzi scheme. There's some key similarities, but there's key differences. So Flow through system, my dollars aren't actually sat, sitting in an investment account waiting for me to collect them. They flow right back out to previous uh, contributors, current retirees. So if I contribute uh, $12,000 in a given year, $12,000, most of it goes out. Almost every year, the Social Security Administration has an excess, which means more money going in than going out. Uh, and that has just recently started to shift. There was actually a time in the 80s where they were like running out of money, and that's one of the times that they uh, that they increased the Social Security tax. So the last time that we actually had an issue with, with this not enough money coming in was 1982 until last year. And 2018 was the first year since 1982 that there was less money coming into the Social Security system than going out. The reason being is that the baby boomer generation are retiring at like something like 10,000 10,000 of them a day, right? So that's a huge amount of them are retiring. Uh, and you can start collecting Social Security as early as age 62. You can delay all the way until 70, which this isn't a strategy on optimizing Social Security. It's a strategy or it's a conversation on what the what what, the, what this system is, right? So in most years, particularly, you know, from 1982 until now, 2018, there was more money coming in than going out. So what happens to the difference? What's the difference between the income and the outcome? They invest it. They invest the difference between this excess, and that's the Social Security Trust Fund, okay? So Social Security Trust Fund invests these dollars, these excess dollars, and they've been investing them for decades, and it's a huge pot of money in the trillions of dollars. So what do you invest a trillion dollars in? Well, Social Security Administration doesn't really have a hard decision on this because by law, 
the only thing that they are allowed to invest in is instruments that are backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. So can anyone think of an investment vehicle that is backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government? Bonds, U.S. Treasury bonds, bonds issued by the U.S. government. So I'm going to do an episode at some point on bonds 101, but here's the here's the bonds 101 30 second version. If you buy a bond, you are loaning that institution money. So if I buy a bond from the U.S. government, I am loaning them $1,000. Let's say that's the cost of the bond. They pay me back interest, let's just say 3% interest, every year until my bond matures, let's just say 10 years. So I buy a 10-year bond, I'm loaning the government $1,000, and they pay me an interest rate on that every year until the 10 years is up, and then I get my $1,000 back. That, by law, is the only thing that the Social Security Trust Fund can invest in. So the only thing they're allowed to do is lend money to the U.S. government via bond purchases. So Social Security system, my dollars go in, they go right back out to somebody else. Most years there's an excess that is now shifted because of the, gener- uh, the, the, the retiring baby boomers. The excess was invested in U.S. government bonds, a.k.a. a loan back to the government. The government then is responsible using tax dollars, who pays tax dollars, you and I and everybody else that earns an income, pays those tax dollars back, uh, you know, uses tax dollars to not only pay back the, the bond, but also the interest on the bond. So that's it. That's how it works. It's a flow-through system with excess invested in U.S. government bonds. So when people say, that the trust fund would be fine if they hadn't taken the money out and spent it. That's not necessarily true. It's not like the U.S. government has never not paid back the money to the trust fund when they borrowed it via bond. They paid it back plus interest. The problem, though, is that interest payment is getting awfully big. Um, And now it's starting to dwindle because starting last year, 2018, there's more money going out than coming in, which means now they're dipping into the principal. Social Security uh, uh, Trust Fund is now dipping into the reserves, right? Because there's more money going out than coming in. What this means is that if you put it on a chart, Social Security Administration can pretty accurately predict this. By 2034, the trust fund will be depleted. There will be no money left in the U.S. uh, Social Security Trust Fund. So the money coming in will only be about 80% of the outflows that they're supposed to be sending out. They got to do something. It's a freaking simple math problem. There's more money going out than coming in, and you've depleted the reserves because the baby boomer generation, you know, as as you know, earned a lot of money over their careers, and now all of them are retiring. We're as a generation not not producing enough income to cover the taxes that are going to be necessary. And not to mention, most generations are smaller than the baby boomer generation. So you have a larger population collecting than paying in. This is exasperated by the fact that we're living longer. So if you start collecting at 65, all of a sudden, you're collecting at 65 and you're living until 95. When Social Security came out, life expectancies were not much longer than the earliest filing date, right? So if you were only going to live until you were 70 and you started collecting at 65, it wasn't, you had five years of payments. But now because of medical science technology, we're living for 20 years past our expectancy, what well, the expectancy we had 100 years ago. So the Social Security system has a math problem. I've told you how it works. It's up to you whether you think it's a a Ponzi scheme or not. If it is, and I'm not saying that it is, I'm saying that there's some uh, structural similarities. But if it is, you know, Congress better do something about making sure that there's new investors coming in at a a fast enough rate to make sure that the trust fund is fine. Okay. So my issue ultimately with this is two things. One, it's a math problem that we know exists. Let's get ahead of the damn thing. I said in one of my previous episodes, don't be like Congress. Don't procrastinate. But that's what they're doing. Nobody wants to have the hard conversation on this. You have to do one of two things in order to make the Social Security system work. Is You have to restrict benefits, which means people collect later, or maybe there's an income testing, or you have to raise taxes. And I would argue the tax has already been raised 20 separate occasions on it. If they're going to be raising the taxes, it's going to impact my generation more than anybody else's. And that's bullshit because we'll probably never collect it. 
I mean, just to be frank, I mean, I'm not going to collect Social Security, I don't think, because I'm going to do a good job saving. And I think at some point, it's going to be a needs-based test, which means they're going to look at it and say, hey, you did a great job of savings. You have investment accounts. You don't need Social Security to live on. We're only going to set it aside for the people that uh, that actually need it. And that's going to kind of suck. But if I guess if that's what it takes to have old people not dying in the street, that's fine. Um, but when it comes down to it, this is a math problem. We can look out on the horizon and we can see it. It's like looking at the clock and counting down until sunset, but not getting ready for bed. It's 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 procrastinating. It's worse or it's finest. I don't know. The other major issue I have here is that Congress always talks about how entitlements are a spending problem. Social Security is an income column, and the expenses for that are a column. That is completely different than the income taxes for general spending. Social Security dollars are earmarked for Social Security. Tax dollars are earmarked for everything else. They are two separate issues. Getting the budget under control and getting Social Security under control are separate issues. And they want to jumble them together. And I don't like that. I just don't. I I don't think you can look at Social Security and say, uh, you know, the government's paying X amount into the trust fund every year. So, you know, we need to raise taxes on this or cut spending or cut benefits. No, the benefits were promised to those who are now retiring. You can't change the retirement game on somebody late in the game. Okay. You got it. You got to be fair on this thing. So my thing is if they make changes, I ultimately think they'll make it for impacting people that are much younger, which AKA that's me and probably many of my listeners. So again, I'm not saying social security is a Ponzi scheme, but I'm saying that there's some very big structural issues there and they have a math problem and we need Congress to fix the damn math problem. Um, by either adjusting the outflows or increasing the inflows. I really am not a huge fan of increasing the inflows because that affects me. Um, and that affects you if you're still working and paying taxes. So wrap this up. Don't plan on it. Don't plan on Social Security. Also, don't bank on your company. You are responsible for your own retirement. You're responsible for your own financial security. If you do not the government may save you from starving in the street, but they're not going to be on the path to prosperity, which is what this podcast is all about. So be sure to subscribe pod, uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Buzzsprout, iTunes, YouTube. We're on there. You name it and check out the Facebook page. Bryce Carter, Prosperity by the Pint. Cheers. Cheers.